On this vote, the ayes are 213 and the nays are 209. With six answering present, the resolution adopted. Without objection, the motion to consider is laid on the table. House will be in order. Raucous situation last night on Capitol Hill. The GOP-led House voting to censure Democrat Congressman Adam Schiff over past claims, very bold claims, uh, that linked the former President Donald Trump to a Russian collusion scheme. The party line vote sparking chaos on the House floor. Schiff is just the 25th congressman in U.S. history to be censured in and the first in 13 years. So this is a significant move here against Adam Schiff. With that, we bring in South Carolina Republican Nancy Mace. She serves on the House Oversight Committee. Great to have you here, Congresswoman Mace. Uh, what, what were your thoughts on what played out last night on the floor? It got noisy down there as they shouted, shame, 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 while Speaker, uh, Speaker McCarthy, I should say, tried to get this business done. Well, the irony certainly wasn't lost on any of us. You know, he was censured and kicked off the Intel Committee for leaking classified information from the Intel Committee. And as the left and Democrats were cheering him on, leaking classified information is okay as long as your last name isn't Trump, because they're the same group of people that want to see Donald Trump uh, spend the rest of his life in jail for having documents that he did not leak. And so, what is Shameful, ironically, was their behavior last night, because whatever the standard is, it needs to be applied to everybody. Adam Schiff is no hero here. Here's a little reminder of some of the language that he used um, that was, uh, you know, according to the Durham report, based on no evidence. Watch this. This is about as clear evidence you could find of intent by the campaign to collude with the Russians. Russians offered help. The campaign accepted help. The Russians gave help and the president made full use of that help. There's clear evidence uh, on the issue of collusion. There is ample evidence of collusion. Oops. <laughs> I mean, you know, Congresswoman Mace, uh, when you look back at that, he was so definitive, so absolutely, so absolute in his condemnation of the former president on this, and then the whole thing fell apart. Right. So bold, so absolute in his lies about the Russia collusion hoax. And Republicans were deemed and called conspiracy theorists. That's still a trend that's happening today, when all we've tried to do is tell the truth. And um, it finally, some accountability happened last night. And then it'll, the rest of his punishment may be referred to the Ethics Committee. We'll see what happens. But you cannot just completely make up a lie. In fact, the Russian collusion, the whole thing, the hoax, was paid for by the Clinton campaign. And the left just wants to turn their back on on this. And we want to make sure that the American people know the truth, know the facts of what have actually happened. And a guy who, who leaked information and made stuff up based out of thin air, that was Adam Schiff. I want to get your reaction to this soundbite between President Trump uh, and his answer to a question by Brett Baer this week. Watch this. What do you say to that female independent suburban voter who feels that way, to win her back? First of all, I won in 2020 by a lot, okay? You Let's get that straight. I won in 2020. You know that this, and if you look at all of the tapes, if the you look at everything... Are you election, going to go... This is how you're going to tell that independent suburban no, woman no, voter no. to vote we're for We're off to winning an election, and I think we're winning very well. Do you think that was a persuasive answer from the former president if uh, suburban women who have drifted away as voters for Republicans were watching that? Well, I am a suburban woman. I'm a suburban mom, single mom of two teenage kids. And I will tell you, suburban women are going to be uh, in enormous to us, critical to our party, to winning the White House in 2024, to keeping the majority of the House, to flipping the Senate. This is an area where we really need to, no matter who the nominee is, we need to make sure that we have an intense focus on winning back women. And I've tried to show a roadmap, a pathway to winning women back. I won my primary and my uh, general election last year by 14 points in a district that was very purple and heavily reliant on educated suburban women. And we need to make sure that we have a concrete answer when we're talking about that. We've got to show that we're, as Republicans, we care about women. We're pro-women. Uh, at the same time, we're pro-life. So we've got to have a strong message headed in 24 for those suburban women. Yeah, um, there's a headline in, the, in Politico this morning, and it says, the new Trump acolyte no one saw coming. Nancy Mace, uh, what's your what's your reaction to that? And also, you know, my, my question was, do you think that talking about the 2020 election being stolen is a way to win back uh, women voters? 
Well, the way the way to win back women voters is to look forward. We need to show that we care about women. When Roe was overturned, we saw a dramatic change in the electorate, and we shouldn't be afraid about talking about how we're going to protect women who are victims of rape or girls who are victims of incest or what we're going to do to make sure that women have greater access to birth control in this country, especially in states where they've banned abortion. These are things that women really care about, suburban areas, things that I've been talking about for a very long time. And uh, I appreciate, you know, the, the question there. My focus right now, obviously, is on South Carolina. I represent uh, constituents in South Carolina. I'm working very hard for those people. But at the same time, I want to make sure that we don't give the country away to Joe Biden in 2024, which is why I talk about issues that are sensitive. I talk about women's issues a lot, because yeah. I want women to know that we as Republicans, we care about them. And we're going to advocate and we're going to fight for their rights, too. Would you be open to being on the ticket as a vice presidential candidate with, with the former President Trump? Well, I'm flattered by the question. Um, I do strongly believe, I've said this from the beginning, that we need to have a woman on the ticket. We need to have a woman that can reach out to independent voters and suburban women, whoever that may end up being. But we're a long way from that process. Uh, we have months to go. It won't be till next year till we know who even the nominee is and what that might look like in the future. Okay, interesting. Uh, Congresswoman Mace, always good to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.